Yeah. And we welcome you back to the Paul Feinbaum Show. Tom Hart sitting in for Paul today. SEC tip-off continues. South Carolina is in the house. My coach star, A.J. Lawson, head coach Frank Martin. Those of you on television saw Will Muschamp a moment ago. I think the key, and I know he's a friend of yours, the key to South Carolina football turning around the season is when he went to the glasses. Have you thought about that? I was going to bring mine here just to celebrate him. I just... <laughs> Uh, one of the best people that I've ever come across. I'm so happy for him and his players and his staff. Uh, but no, I, Tom, I got to admit, I'm into the readers too now. <laughs> I've got no chance to read without them. You know, South Carolina football and, and Will Muschamp kind of remind me of your program. I mean, uh, blue collar, you've got to grind, you've got to really work. And I know now that you guys are more athletic this season mm -hmm. than you have been. And your offense was way different last year than what you had been previously. Um, where do you want to be this year when it comes to tempo? Because you were top 25 in the country time of possession last year. I, I love playing fast. I always have. Uh, last year, uh, we were playing pretty fast, and then we started dealing with injuries. And then at the end of the year, when A.J. goes down, uh, those last couple games, we had to kind of slow it down because we we didn't we had seven guys. Yeah, I couldn't afford Mike getting in foul trouble or some other guy uh, being tired. You know, we didn't have enough people, but we we've got a deep team right now. Uh, uh, I heard Tom Crean was up here earlier today knocking on wood, and he kind of banged on his player's head. So I'm going <laughs> to knock on wood too. And we, we we stay healthy, uh, but uh, um, we're we're in a good place. We. These guys are fun to coach, and they're competitive, and they're great to be around every day in practice. AJ, tell me about your summer. What was uh, what was the international experience like play, playing for the Canadian national team? Uh, my summer was fun. Uh, we went to France first, played some exhibition games there. Then we went to Greece for the tournament, FIBA tournament. It was fun. It was an experience. Greece was a great city. I loved it. What did you learn from a basketball perspective over the course of the summer? I mean, you get to all these great international experiences. Um, but from basketball, what did you learn? Uh, this year, I was in the leadership position and learned how to be a better leader. Uh, I was playing the one, two, and three on the team, learned how to be like a vocal leader because that's what I struggled with last year. And this year, I feel like Team Canada helped me with that a lot. Mike, how, how about you? Where can your game take the next step this season? Um, I feel like I just need to be a lot more aggressive. Um, last year, there were some confidence issues on me. Uh, and I worked on it during the summer, and I feel like this year I need to be a whole lot more more aggressive. Where do you build confidence? How do you do that? Um, one thing's getting in the gym. Uh, others just talking to your friends, family, coaches, everyone, just trying to have more self-confidence. Yeah. Uh, AJ, tell me about this roster. All right? Tell me about some of these new guys and how the athleticism of this team has improved. Uh, we definitely improved. A lot of athletic guys on this team. We're all competitive. We all love to work. Uh, this year, I never got my shot blocked so much <laughs> by, these, by these big men. And then it just went around like transition drills, a lot of dunks. Cause we just we had those type of guys. Uh, Frank, this is a team that obviously is more athletic. You say you want to play at a faster speed and faster tempo. What kind of impact did you see from the Final Four a few years ago? And where... And what would you tell, say, Bruce Pearl about the importance of capitalizing on that, not just within the basketball program, but the entire athletic department capitalizing on it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's like getting back to Mike's situation. Uh, you know, you're a freshman and you earn a starting job. The next thing you know, you're playing in front of 78,000 people uh, against Gonzaga. And everyone that was on the court with you leaves. And now you're left behind with Chris Silva and the pressure of having to perform to get back to that spot falls on him and and uh he's in a better place to manage that now and uh but uh you end up recruiting him that's what happens when you go to a final four yeah you, you end up being able to go into his home and making him understand like yo this school this staff we did this the guys in the locker room they played there so now it becomes important to him that he can trust that this is a place I can go to and have success at the ultimate level and that they're going to care for me as a human being. And, um, and then as a school, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it bring our enrollment, our president that just retired, Dr. Pastides, called it the basketball bump. Hmm. Our enrollment set records after the Final Four. Uh, it's, it's something that brings unbelievable attention to your university and uh, 
Uh, and, and everybody prospers and grows from from being on that platform. And the, and the recruiting continues to improve. And I was going to ask how do you replace Chris Silva, who's such a great defensive presence. But, AJ, I'm guessing if you're getting your shot blocked more this year than you ever have, that defensively there's not much of a, of a concern in terms of having a rim protector in there. I don't think so. I think we, we're a pretty good team this year. Lots of talent. So you're a Toronto kid. Uh, Toronto basketball over like what the last 10 years has just gone through the roof Canadian basketball as a whole you got guys in this league you got guys going on to the next league what was the turnaround where did that kick start with Toronto uh, I can't say I started like taking the game very serious from like middle school on to high school just trying to be the best I can I feel like that's like everyone like I feel like we got more media now exposure in Canada that, that we didn't have a couple years like decades ago the Raptors success have much to do with that that too like when they won this year I haven't seen the city go crazy like that ever mm. like everyone was in the streets just cheering on the Raptors after they won the uh, title Mike walk me through your history how do you end up in Columbia South Carolina playing for Frank Martin uh, well, I should start with uh, my senior year of high school. Uh, had a bad sol shoulder injury, uh, recovered the entire year. And uh, from there, uh, thanks to uh, one of the coaches in Estonia and connections, I got uh, to Wichita, Kansas, and uh, to a prep school over there. And pretty much worked out there, recovered my shoulder, tried to get it as strong as possible, played some games, and got recruited by South Carolina. Just that easy, huh? <laughs> You've never seen a palm tree before. You go through Wichita, you end up in Columbia, South Carolina. We were talking off air. He spoke Estonian, ended up stuck with me. <laughs> That's uh, I'm sure there were some days he was glad he couldn't understand exactly what you were saying. You know, you asked, you asked him about replacing Chris. Yeah. They're really frustrated because I used to yell at Chris more than anyone on the team. <laughs> So they're trying to figure out who's going to have to replace that role. That's part of moving into a leadership <laughs> role, right? Now, now you get all the, the vocal attention the coach has. Um, we've got four new coaches in this league. Yeah. If, if competition wasn't a consideration, what would you tell those four guys about, that you wish somebody had told you when you came into this league? It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's, uh, um, the, the league is hard. Uh, the, the players, the... the, the the atmospheres that we're playing in when we go on the road in this league, um, the coaching, it's hard. It's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's survival. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you could play real well and not win. And, uh, uh, and you can have a real good team and play well and not win. And uh, uh, so you got to have patience because uh, the 18 games are hard. Uh, so it makes it long. Um, and uh, you just can't you can't as a coach overreact to a good game or a bad game in conference play because then you just get engulfed with how difficult the next day is so patience i've got one tip if, if you guys don't want to hear coach as much during practice and i learned this a few years ago watching his practices is if as a veteran you already know what he's going to say you can say it first you tell your teammate first, and, and then he could just sit back on the bench. He pays attention. Okay. <laughs> so he does. which of you two is going to be Frank Martin Jr., and who's going to get on the teammate before he does? I feel like we both are trying to do that. Uh, I feel like I'm trying, I have more knowledge about what the big men are doing. AJ has more knowledge about the guard position. Yep. So whenever we see someone mess up, uh, then we try to help him out as fast as possible. I definitely think people, players listen to peers. It's a lot easier to get it from a peer than it is from a coach. You agree with that? That's for sure. Because you understand, like, your teammates better than, like, the coaches do sometimes because they keep being in that position before. Especially, yeah. especially when, like, coaches are yelling at you. You know, you got, like, you know that feeling. You can help them out. Be like, nah, it's okay. It's just tough love. Yeah, and it's, it's something to learn. It's a learning curve. Speaking of which, you said that you played one through three over the course of the summer. What did you learn about where you're most comfortable offensively, especially? Uh... I learned how to be like comfortable in like not comfortable positions. Like when I was playing like the one, I was working on things I couldn't do like last year, like trying to work on my left hand more. When I was playing like the two, working on focusing on my feet and my form. And when I was playing the three, just learning how to get off screens and like create offense when I don't have the ball. All right, so you guys have a uh, scrimmage coming up with Illinois relatively soon. What do you hope to learn in that scrimmage? Um, kind of put me on the spot here. I think I've got a hedge on that question. Oh, we're not supposed to maybe say, okay, yeah. let me put it to you this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. do you want to learn from your team when you get on the floor for the first time? I, I want to see us compete um, 
against I'm seeing us compete every every day against each other and I have a feel for who they are yeah and I'm excited for who we can be uh, but it's always great when you can kind of see yourself against somebody else um, it tells you a lot more about your team when you when you can do that I'm not very good at keeping <laughs> I think if you were to play a team with a head of coach that you knew that would probably be beneficial yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 hey thanks for being with us Mike AJ coach thanks, great buddy. to see you thank you South you. Carolina they're done for the day they'll go meet the rest of them